Okay, thanks for coming. Um, a couple quick comments. Uh, very obviously pleased. I, I don't think relieved is the uh, right word, but pleased to get out of uh, State College with a win that was, um, I, I said it was a top five atmosphere. I got in the top three now after that one. That was uh, incredible. That's a credit to their student body and their fans. They did a great job. Um, uh, JT Barrett took the field. We're down by seven points after blowing the lead. And to see him lead an offense as a redshirt freshman into the student section, down by seven in the first overtime was, I just remember, I, I, I'll probably never forget that look when I, when I saw our offense taking the field against the, the whiteout of the student section, down by seven against the defense. It really kind of shut us down the second half. Number one rush defense in the country and uh, take us in first score. So, obviously, we're going to build upon that. Uh, a lot of things we got to get better. The offense line did not play up to Ohio State standards, and that's where it starts. Uh, that certainly wasn't the only issue on offense. Uh, JT actually had uh, uh, just an okay game as far as some of the reads and some of the decisions he had to make. And anytime you know a team has a bye week, and it seems to be this is the year. We've had a couple of those years where. You get two or three games right in a row where teams are having bye weeks before they play you. Uh, we just got to, you know, we got to do a good job um, as a staff getting ready for the unexpected. And that's been kind of the, the theme the last uh, several weeks when you get a team off a of bye week. Defensively, other than the final drive, very pleased with their effort. We are getting better on defense. Uh, playing a little bit of swagger and uh, a little more confidence. I can tell the way our coaches are coaching and, and more, more importantly, our players are going after the the way they're just the behavior and the way they go after the game. So uh, very good. Special teams was a major factor in that field position. Our punter is really good at what he does. Uh, kickoff coverage was, I think we just had two. One came out a little bit. We overran it, but uh, the effort was there. Kick return, we're getting very close. Dontre's hitting it hard. And uh, punt return really didn't have any opportunities. There were a lot of short punts. So a uh, great win for the Buckeyes. And uh, looking forward to coming back home. and. Continuing our journey. We'll open it up for questions. Front row, Todd. Or, or you mentioned about JT's reads not all being correct. On the, the one zone blitz, uh, the pick six, what's the correct read there? That's tough. That's uh, the, uh, when they, the correct blitz is throw hot, and he threw hot, and that they schemed us up pretty good. So that was not one that was, that's, that was a schematical thing that if a quarterback, a veteran quarterback, would just probably burn it, which means throw it into the ground. Uh, but that, that is the correct read, is to throw a hot. It's called a hot. You hear that a lot. When they bring more than you can block, which they did, you have a hot sight adjustment hot, and you throw it to them, which we've done a few times this year. They did a nice job. The thing that defense is have to figure out which side that is. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's, they did a nice job. But if, in those situations, veteran quarterbacks, you're like, just burn it. You get the second and tens, no issue, or punt the ball. The, the, are you pleased with the pace of the offense? I think you guys are averaging about 76 plays a game. Saturday it was not. Uh, up to this point, it's getting better and better and better. And, and uh, once again, it's, when you're three in and out and pace isn't, you know, that's not, we kind of slowed it down a little bit. That was kind of one of those games where, you know, I kind of, not uh, kind of, we we're playing very good defense, playing pretty good field position. That's not a little bit like Wisconsin a couple years ago. Um, and we threw the pick six, and I saw a rattled quarterback. So we kind of got conservative there for a little bit. And uh, as a result, didn't get as many yards or first downs that we normally get. Front row, Bill. I know you're not going to overlook Illinois, but in two weeks you've got Michigan State, which will be a very similar atmosphere to what you face Saturday. Do you think that what you guys experienced on Saturday was actually a good thing? Obviously it's it's not a good thing. It's a great thing. I talked a couple of my colleagues who I talked to uh, on a weekly basis, you know, they made those comments, and that's true. You know, and it's not just the atmosphere. It's the – you had to nut up, man. You had to you're, – you're down. You're down by seven points in that environment, and there's no – don't look to – don't look for anyone else for help. There's 11 guys out there have to score a touchdown, and they did. And there's incredible efforts, you know, on you know, Dontre Wilson on one play going in and blocking a guy, you know, big – you know, I just saw some incredible efforts. And the thing I like to see as well as anything, when we score, you can see the most invested players just on Joey Bosa's sack to see Darren Lee and, you know, everybody, you know, just uh, – there's not much energy left, but the invested players, invested teams really celebrate wins, and, and our guys did. So uh, it, to answer your question, there's no question. Not just environment, but 
the toughness element that you just you just were in a street fight and you were winning you started getting your tail kicked and you came back and won that's that builds toughness even a part of you that when you've coasted really for a month I mean you've blown out everybody it was almost hoping for something like that no 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 <laughs> no on Monday afterwards or is it Monday on Monday afterwards I'm I'm good, but we didn't play very good. You know, there's some positions and some players that didn't play very good that we have to get fixed. And to overlook Illinois, Illinois just won a big game. Illinois is much improved from a year ago. Uh, so uh, there's no, there will be no overlooking anyone. Front roll that for you. Is uh, JT Barrett going to be limited in practice this week, Coach? Oh, he's got a sprained knee, MCL. So it's obviously there's nothing, there's no surgery or anything. And um, I think he will be limited. Uh, we're going to go. We, we had adjusted our practice schedule. We got in at 430. And uh, I was going to have a 630 team meeting to get going, but we decided to give them Sunday off. And so we're going to practice today. And uh, that's what we usually practice on Sunday. Is this the time of year? You're, I imagine you're, you're backing <coughs> off on your starters a little bit in practice, mm -hmm. especially after an OT game. How hard does that make that to improve week to week? Well, it's the, the area that takes, that's a great question, the area that takes a hit is your fundamentals uh, because you just can't be out there for that long. So, you know, the two-hour practices become hour 45-minute practices. And so that's, that's a hit. And so we're going to actually keep the young players out that didn't play much today an extra 35 minutes to work on the fundamentals. But there's some guys played 80 plays, 70 plays in those games, and to go take them out today, it's going to be a nine-period, ten-period practice, and they're off. Uh, but Tuesday and Wednesday, you have to do what you got to do. But the fundamentals are the thing that starts to take you hit this time of year. That's why when you hear people talk about bowl practices being so important, which we missed a couple of years ago, but it's just to get back to that because some of these kids are not going to get fundamentals to spring practice if you don't go to a bowl game. Front row, Dave. Uh, going into halftime, you told the sideline reporter you, you guys thought you thought you guys were being too conservative and you needed to open it up. In the second half, you guys were pretty conservative. You touched on this a little bit. JT was a little rattled after the first interception. Was it? Also, the offensive line, and just as you reflect on, do you think you guys were too conservative? No, I think we did what we had to do to win the game. It was ugly. It was nasty. It was, uh, I didn't like it. No one, I'm sure, anyone, Ohio State fan, if uh, I'm sure I could, I might, if we do our phone call and let people call in and rip us to death, that would be interesting. We're not going to do that. Uh, but we won the game in a tough environment, and, a, you know, our freshman quarterback threw a pick six. Uh, three times, uh, offensive line gave up quick sacks. Uh, against a very good defense line, but no excuse. We just got to get better. And yeah, it was a little, when you're playing good defense, at one point, you take away the final drive. I want to say we held them to under 200 yards offense. Uh, and you're playing very good defense. You're getting pressure on a quarterback. It's called game management. And sometimes I'll watch TV sometimes and I'll say, what are they doing? You know, they win the game. And sometimes fans don't want to, you know, they want to what, throw it, throw it, throw it, do this, do this. Where's the reverses? Where's this? And then you look at the score, you're up 17 nothing, and you, know, you got to do what you got to do to win that game. And that's what happened during the course of that game. Second row left, David Briggs. Hey, Irvin, I know there's a lot of interest in the first college football playoff rankings coming out tomorrow. I, I know it's probably not on your mind right now, but have you taken a chance to familiar, familiarize yourself with the criteria? And with the committee more than computers, do you feel like there's maybe more of an emphasis on so-called style points heading into games like Saturday? The BCS was no different, in my opinion. You know, there was... Uh, I think style points are real. Does that affect the way we go about our business? Not at all. So uh, I have no idea what the criteria is. And, but I imagine everything I hear, it's very similar to the BCS. The BCS and the playoffs to me were the same. It's, it's, you gotta, instead of the top two, you got to get in the top four. Another kind of bigger picture question, but a ton of one-loss teams out there, obviously five major conferences battling for those four spots. Do you think the Big Ten should and will be in the conversation at the end of the year? I think so. I don't have any idea what the, you know, I think Michigan State's playing great football right now. You know, they're the top team in the Big Ten right now. And they're playing great, not good. Uh, so I don't know. Front row left, Rusty. Urban, if you have players who are 18 to 20 years old whose focus can wander from time to time, does Illinois' win against Minnesota help you a lot this week? In the videotape, I've, I've seen this uh, quite often, the videotape is the, in the, because they, They've already got today, they came in for an hour and a half, and we put the uh, Penn State game away. And they're going to come in again today, and they're going to get another 30, 45 minutes of videotape on the opponent. 
and that usually wakens you up. If they, if they were lousy, then you'd have a problem. And the good thing the good thing is for our conference and them, Illinois won. Illinois is not as much better. I know they lost their quarterback, but they're they're playing much better. Uh, on de I just spent all morning watching their defense, and they're uh, much better than a year ago on defense. And any other health issues other than JT? Uh, help me with that. I don't think so. Is there someone got dinged in the game? Uh, I can. Burrow should be back. Um, Frazier should be back this week at a sprained ankle. Uh, Devin Boger is going to have surgery, ACL. Uh, Briante is close, uh, and Ron Tanner is close, so that's going to be a game time decision on those guys. Trevor, over to the right. Tim? Yeah, there were a couple things. Uh, number one, you were a wily defensive back back in your day. What is the difference between <laughs> being on top of a guy, covering a guy, and then making the play? You know, Eli had a couple of challenges the other night. So did Von Bell. Yeah, so did Von Bell. I actually <laughs> talked to our uh, Chris Ash about that today, and that's given the guys, uh, like Tyvis Powell was that guy. And he stepped in front of one and made a great interception. It's a lot of it, you know, some guys are really just naturally playing the ball. A lot of times those are the offensive players. You know, Joe Hayden was an offensive player his entire career. And he was very natural at going after balls and stuff like that. So Von Bell surprised, you know, usually much better than he was on that one play down on the uh, far end zone. Uh, but as often as you can put him in practice, and I'll even go down to the scout team and I'll tell them to throw picks. You know, I'll tell the uh, Stephen Collier, I said, let this go, and because uh, I want to see those guys make interceptions. Yeah, and, and the reason I'm asking that, because obviously Armani, Armani had, Armani Armani had a ball right there, yeah. would have ended the game. Literally. I mean, I just want to say, what, what do you tell those guys from a confidence standpoint or whatever about, you know, you still believe in them? I mean, what, what, what do you tell those guys this week? Well, we have a, a method of coaching here that if the only time we'll jump a kid and jump them really hard is the effort. You know, other than that, it's all coaching and opportunities that you give them in practice. And that's why I, I love our staff, and they do a good job of that. There's no – you don't rip a kid for – you know, that kid was great effort, great coverage. Now we just – we have to give them that. It's called competitive excellence, how many times that we give you that opportunity in practice. And, and one of the things uh, – uh, I was just following that previous one on this one. The college football playoff, this is a committee, though. There's going to be discussions, you know, between yeah, – do you think that will make it a uh, more inclusive – Kind of group at the end of the uh, at the end of the process uh, of four meeting teams from around the country. I mean, what do you, what do you kind of expect from the fact they're going to have discussions? Tim, I couldn't tell. You. I think Barry Alvarez is on the committee, and other than that, I'm not quite sure who is. And that's just because I'm good friends with Coach Alvarez, and he's a great guy. That's all I know. Um, I have spent zero time on that. That's we got to try to find a way to win our what are we sixth and one our seventh game. All right, Austin. Urban, you said that you know JT will be somewhat limited this week in practice. When when you have a situation like that, do you already kind of know how if, how many reps he'll get throughout the week? You have to play it by ear. How do you manage a situation like that with the quarterback? I think each player is different. You know, he's a guy that's not going to say he's the, one of the toughest cats I've ever been around. To think what he did at that uh, that game, I mean, I'm just so impressed by that. And to say I knew that, I didn't know that. I mean, I hadn't. But the, what he did now, how many guys could have done that? had a, you know, a very serious injury. An MCL injury is a serious injury. And to go in and he won, the, you know, he got hit on the three-yard line. And I didn't realize that until one of my friends who watched it on TV says, unbelievable. I said, what happened? You know, because on video it's hard to see. I guess the television copy, they showed it. And he got on three-yard line and he bowls his way against Penn State's defense and win the game. And that's, uh, so we're going to, uh, to answer your question, I don't know. We're going to see how he goes. Uh, he's going to probably be a guy that you won't tell that he's limited. We're just going to make sure he's limited. It's on, not on throwing, it's on running. And far left, uh, Matt? Um, I just, this is an obvious question, but how good is Joey Bosa playing right now? What do you see in him that uh, has kind of elevated him even more? Uh, I, I always go back to, and I say this all the time about Joey, is I don't see him changing. And if I do, it's going to be a bad conversation because what's got him to this point is and it's also credit to his dad who played the game and it's his high school program, St. Thomas. He's a practice player. Um, he goes out and practices and does a good job and it's, it's effort. And, and that's why you continue to see a guy, a guy like that improve. And he is getting better. He's better than he was at the beginning of the season right now. He's not making early in the season, made some mistakes. You know, we didn't probably announce it, but he had some mistakes in the run game when he's supposed to come under, and he didn't do that. He's, he's, he's playing much better right now. That, that winning play, what, what was your reaction when you well, I didn't really it? see it until after I came in the next day and watched it. It was a tailback that was trying to block that big monster, and that was uh, 
Um, he was actually supposed to loop out. He's contained on that because we had a little pressure, bare pressure against him. And, and the uh, guard blocked down, tackle blocked out, and he took a step. And it's him in the back, and he just took him right into him. So uh, obviously trem tremendous physical specimen what, uh, what he's able to do. He's a fast twitch guy that's real big and strong. So great player. Urban, you've talked about how the, the defense played well, but except for that, you know, the last drive to tie the game. What do you think happened that they marched 19 plays, 77 yards to tie it up? Yeah, penalties along the way, and we had played too soft. You know, we uh, gave up a couple underneath, and uh, give Penn State credit, the guy made a couple of tremendous throws. Uh, but that was, uh, that was a tough one to, uh, I think, is that the one where Von Bell, the guy caught it on the two yard line, too? That was what? That was their score in overtime. We're just, in my opinion, played a little too soft and, and uh, a little bend but dope rank. And, and the guy, the guy Hackenberg's a hell of a player, made a couple throws that were outstanding. And, and you talked about sort of after the game, just the operation of the offense in the second half. I was happy with the things you said today. You guys have put up so many points in so many yards. I know not against a defense like Penn State, but in the previous four games. Did you think? You were rolling even against a defense that good. Did you think this offense was going to be able to do whatever it wanted to do? Not whatever it wanted to do. Not against a run defense like that. You know, it's you start becoming balanced a little bit. And I knew they had a bye week, and the bye week stuff sets up red flags in that offensive staff room because you can spend all your time working on this and you're going to get something. And Penn State did a very good job. That's why we're we're checking our own tendencies more than we ever have right now because there's some, you know, they're they're making some good defensive calls against us right now, and that's. Uh, that, that's, we're facing right now. The Big Ten's got some really good. Just, someone gave me a list of there's some teams, including ours, in the top 10 or top 15 in the defense. And Penn State, there's no question that's a top five defense right now. And, and just, I'm sorry, you guys put in Cardinal just for one play on a short yardage thing. Was that like a wrinkle, or was that because JT had the, the knee, or what was? Yeah, that was the head coach's thing that didn't work. That's. He's a big guy that runs well, and you know I knew JT had his thing, and they were doing a good job defending our short yardage, and we had some success early on with that play, and and I thought a 250-pound quarterback could drop his pads, instead he jumped, and and so we're going to keep his feet on the ground and get his pads down. That was that's why. And last question over here to the right play. You got quite a few disciples out there now, if you will. That you talk about Charlie Strong, Mullen, etc. Tim Beckman was one. Is he because he's struggled a bit? Fourth year, he's ten and twenty-two. Over the years, have you, has he consulted with you? Have you talked with him? And maybe oh, now yeah. that he's in the league, you can't do that. But advice to him? Oh, uh, it's not advice. It's co he's a colleague and a good friend. So it's more conversations about our families and and uh, his father's actually. I'm very close with his father. He's an old football coach. Uh, he's a real coach back when I call him. And so. Uh, not advice. Certainly, we don't talk football because we're in the same league. But a lot of respect for Tim, and I think he's. You watch his team; they're getting better. Now it's just a matter, you know, how much better can they get? Because I think their their players are well coached. Uh, I'm just speaking about their defense. Even Tom Herman said this is one of the better coached defenses we're going to face. So, uh, more friendship conversation than anything else.